Hey, everybody. Welcome back. View from the Pew, our daily podcast where we talk about a lot of fun stuff, pop culture, sports. Uh, but, you know, we live in the real world and we talk about serious stuff, too. And the thing I like about my guest, Toby Price, is he kind of we've talked to him a couple times before and he's talked about fun stuff. And uh, obviously there's a lot of serious stuff that affects him, too. So welcome aboard, Toby. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, man. It's really good to see you again, Chris. Um, you know, I'm 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 doing great. I'm gonna keep saying that until I start to believe it. I'm doing better than you know. I know a lot of folks were after this week. It's been a weird week, but um, today's been a good day. Uh, my kids are doing good. Wife's doing good. I can't complain, man. I can't complain. You're in a car, in Mississippi. I know it's very bright down there. You're oh, not gosh, in heaven yeah. or something. You're you're in a car. <laughs> well, I'm just, it's, it's bright sure one second looking. and then it's shady the next. So it's just changing like uh, every five minutes it just keeps changing no matter what i do when, when i first saw you in the call i'm like toby's an angel no no toby's still on the earth he's in mississippi which <laughs> hey it, it, it's a fun area well um couple things couple updates about toby we got to know toby there was a viral story uh unfortunately toby got fired he was a assistant principal at school down in mississippi He's actually from the Columbus area. Um, he wrote a fun book. I need a new butt. And it was just a fun book that a lot of um, you know, a lot of fun kids' books out there, but you know our culture today, everyone gets easily offended. Uh Toby unfortunately was fired for that, and he's currently fighting this case. Um, Toby, you said state supreme court might hear it soon, right? Yeah, the state supreme court is going to be hearing it soon. Um, you know, I'm just, my fingers crossed. I I don't really know what to expect. You know, it's just not every day you say, well, we're going to the state Supreme court. I don't know how it works, but luckily with Google and chat GPT, I've been learning (laughs) and and we're figuring, we're figuring stuff out as we go. And I'm very, I'm very hopeful Mm -hmm. because, you know, we, we, we could, we could use it. There's a lot that they took away from us, but at the same time, we're putting it back together in a new way and in a good way. So, you know, we're, we're going to be okay either way. We're going to be okay either way. But I stand by the fact that, you know what, kids still need silly books. And that book was awesome. And kids love silly books. I know I, I still love silly books. So I, I stand by what I did. And I think the book was amazing. And I think kids love silly books. So, you know, maybe something good will come from it. Yeah. And understand and you know if you go back to original podcasts i think we read elements from the book and everything it's a silly book i mean this isn't even the case of oh they talked about this topic that was controversial no it was a silly dumb funny book you know um (laughs) it's funny how i i know sometimes you know people get mad if there's like a reference to you know being gay or something else like that and that's that it was just more of a silly fun book and i think the the title kind of got people upset so Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the many things that you know we've been able to connect with is um we're both autism dads uh you know toby you have some kids down there i have a couple kids up here um you know donald trump guy i don't even know how you say he really didn't get re-elected because he took four years off after losing the last election, but he's back in office. He won the general election um, starting in January. He'll serve another four years in the U.S. Obviously, you know, Trump's controversial. You either love him or hate him for a lot of reasons. But the one thing I've been trying to communicate during our podcast this week is it's not as much if you like the personality or not. Some of the policies that he talked about and some of the policies that were – kind of looking at that he might look at is a lot of the funding for some of these deserving programs. And tell me, I know in your Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it, uh, um, service now, you've kind mm-hmm. of talked about how this could be effect on autism dads. What are you looking at um, the effect that a Trump presidency could have on autism dads? One, my, my biggest worry, um, well, my first worry was uh, – Dissolving the Department of Education. Um, Mm -hmm. The Department of Education does do a lot of things, but one of the things that kind of gets overlooked that they do is they're the folks that make sure schools and states and districts are following IDEA, Public Law 91-142. It's really weird that I can remember that because I'm not that smart. But that's the law that states that, you know, everyone is um, entitled to a free, fair, and appropriate Mm -hmm. education. And with them not around to enforce it, you know, we're left with the states, which is fine. There's good people in the states. But at the same time, I feel more comfortable knowing that there's somebody holding everyone accountable across the board to make sure that that's still happening. 
Now, my, my kids are no longer in public schools. Okay. But at the same time, you know, I, I can't, I'm an educator. I still can't let go of that, that there's a lot of people who may not be getting what they need and what those kids need very, very soon. And that, that scares me. One of the others, what is up with the camera? Uh, <laughs> one of the other things that bothers me is I'm not sure what's going to happen with social security and uh, Medicaid or dis and the kids insurance. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and anytime you have anything <laughs> like an uncertainty, you know, you're an autism dad, man. We think about and plan everything to the, to the, you know, to the down to the wire um, of what we're going to do when we go somewhere. I show my son pictures of where we're going. I talk about what's going to happen when we get there and to have something that big be uncertain, man, it's just stress 24 seven. And, um, you know, I'm worried, but I'm also optimistic that, you know, some things maybe will just be left alone um, because, you know, the first time he was in office, he had a long list of things he said he was going to do and he, he didn't really get a lot of them completed. So uh, I, I may, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay optimistic. Um, if not, I'm trying to move to an island somewhere where I want to worry about it, but <laughs> I'm trying to stay optimistic, at least for my kids sake, my youngest daughter, who is 18, uh, who was uh, recently diagnosed bipolar, you know, she she has a lot of strong feelings about it and a lot of worries and fears. And she has a real a real black and white sense of justice and right and wrong. And, you know, this election, it hurt her. It hurt her really bad. Um, she's bounced back. But, you know, we're all just nervous. And being a special needs dad, being nervous and uncertain about something, that's the worst. Yeah. The worst. Well, and I, I, I kind of wanted to... I know when Trump first got elected, I got nervous. Um, the autism scholarship is very important to our family because mm -hmm. we just don't feel like, like I don't know if our kids can get our kids. Well, I, I'm trying to be polite to my kids. Our kids need one on one attention, and it's hard to do in the public schools. Oh, yeah. So the autism scholarship has really helped us out for that. And I, at least, and I'm not even sure how much Trump knows or doesn't know about the autism scholarship. You know, we got for four years without that going away. I, I get a little nervous about that again, but again, maybe he overlooked the last time, maybe he'll overlook it this time. I don't know. But like you said, I don't know. I mean, I've no assurance either way what that's going to happen to me. And, and that's yeah. tough because you want the best for your kids and it's so hard to provide no, no matter what your salary is right now. You know, just oh, yeah. Yeah, it totally, it totally is. It totally is. And, and, you know, the only thing that helps me because, you know, I, if I'm happy and I know it, it's my meds. That's what the song says, you know, but mm -hmm. one of the things that helped me is I, I've been focusing on the fact that taking it day by day, making sure the kids are happy each day, yeah. they're happy. I'm making them, you know, follow the rules. I'm holding them accountable, but as long as they're happy and each day I, I'm okay. So I'm not worrying about the big stuff yet um, until it becomes something we have to, you know, try to handle. Right now, it's not. Um, so, you know, we keep our fingers crossed and we'll just just kind of play it by ear, day by day. And I, I, like I said, I hope, you know, he has a lot of strong feelings about people who are different. And I hope that when it comes to friends with disabilities or friends with autism, I hope that, you know what, they just... I don't know. Leave it alone. I guess if you're not going to, if you, I don't know that I don't want to, I don't want to say it in a negative way, but I hope they just, I, I do kind of hope they overlook us for a little while and just leave us alone. If, if that makes sense. I don't know. I don't know. What, what do you think the best path forward is? Like, I, I feel even with family and friends that don't understand autism, I feel like I'm always trying to educate people and I, I, I'm not good at it. My wife is a billion times better than I am. A lot of things that included um, do you think there's anything more we can do? I mean, like I said, I'm a journalist. I'm a podcaster. I've got a small audience. I know, you know, you're heavy on social media <clears throat> from your, from the stuff you've been involved in. You're attracting a little bit of audience too. And I, I know people are learning from what we do. Is there anything else we could do though? I think, I think as long as we keep, we keep finding ways to, I don't want to say normalize, um, you know, people who are neuro neurodivergent, but keep finding ways to include them and show them that they're, that it's just part of everyday life. You know, I guess, 
I guess one of the bigger things we could do is making sure that we keep those folks included. Um, one of my favorite things that my daughter has seen where she's working part time at a daycare now is there's a young man there with special needs and it's not a special needs teacher. And, you know, she's kind of thrown in the deep end, but he's getting included and it's not only benefiting him, but it's benefiting the kids around him, you know, cause they're, they're learning how to work with him and be friends with him. So I think, you know, we keep, keep talking about the inclusion, keep making sure that the, you know, the kids stay out there and we try new things. Don't be afraid to try new things. Um, you know, there's plenty of TV shows now that have some characters like that. There's even some things on PBS, the car- new cartoons that have some characters from the neurodivergent. Um, I have a book with a character that, you know, the characters are neurodivergent. And they, <laughs> I've been told they're some of the more normal people in the stories. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I think we just have to we just have to keep doing what we're doing. You know, keep sharing it. And don't be afraid to share authentic stories. You know, sometimes on social media, we just share the sunshine and rainbows. Um, don't be afraid to share the stinkers either because we learn a lot from the stinkers and the mistakes in our stories. So I, I think that would be, that would be my, my one thing is just to keep sharing and don't be afraid to share the, the hard stuff and, and just try to stay authentic because that's the stuff I'd like to listen to and learn from. Yeah, that's powerful too. I, I kind of wanted to, and again, I, I purchased from a journalism standpoint. Um, mainstream media is so powerful and i don't believe the crap where some people say mainstream media is dead it's not dead Mm -hmm. but i i see there's a lot more alternative media that comes up um you see a lot more podcasting out there people want to tell long-form stories and i encourage those people too i i i know you're you're probably influenced by the right wing you know i think of guys like joe rogan you get get excited to have trump on their podcast and stuff like that well and and that's fine do what you want to do but make sure you tell the other stories too i I think there's exactly you know stories like yours and other people because i I think the big thing we need to do is just keep that at the front of people's attention and i'm hoping that for some of these podcasts yeah you know the crazy right wing talks the flavor of the month, but tell other stories too. I mean, tell well, and I think you need both. You need both sides of those stories. Um, yeah, you know, to take it from a geeky perspective, you know, that Joker movie was great, mm-hmm. but now that we got to Joker two, man, it's kind of stale that there's no Batman. There's no other side of it. You know, they were kind of no. opposite sides of a coin. You know, you need both sides of it to make the story interesting. And you know, they have to. I I, I think that's a great point, man. They really have to remember that you need the left side and the right side. You need all of those stories to make those things interesting. I, I think the unfortunate thing, and I get it, you know, I'm trying to get a bigger audience. I, I know you're an author. You write stuff too. If you can get a bigger audience, that's, that's good too. Mm-hmm. I think the unfortunate thing about this Trump thing for me is I think you see some people embracing Trump. I don't even know if they understand or, or believe like him. I think they just say, wow, he has a lot of followers. So if I say I like Trump, maybe I get a lot of his followers too. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's just unfortunate for many different levels. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's not, it's not, that's not the way that, that's not the way to do it. You know? Yeah. I think, and folks who are online, my, my advice to the ones who are online, I got to go get my son in a minute. But, you yeah. know, somebody, yeah. somebody told me this a long time ago who's a lot smarter than I am. But if you're going to be online, you got to try to be entertaining or educational. And if you're really lucky, you can be both. And yes, you could say you like Trump, and that's great, but that's not going to. That's only going to take you so far. You got to be entertaining or educational, and and if you're lucky, be both. You know, be fun. I'm, one day I'm going to be entertaining. I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Toby, we'll share your information, but real quick before you go, uh, what's your okay. latest books? What can we buy from you? Oh, oh, um, all right. You can go to titusthemonkey.com. T Y T U S the Monkey dot com, and uh, my first two books with Codebreaker are on there online, ready to come out. Um, book three is put, I got to put it together and turn it in, but I'm working on, and I I can only say so much, but I'm working on illustrating some other really cool products for other code breaker authors that I'm really, really excited about. As soon as I can start talking about them. Oh my gosh, I will. And, um, so you can find me online at Jedi pad master and you can find me on, uh, Twitter because I still call it Twitter. Uh, blue sky. I love me some blue sky. Okay. Um, Instagram, all those places. Jedi Pad Master is the best way to find me. Fantastic. Well, Toby, it's always good talking to you. Let's do this soon. Hey, I'll let you go right now so you get your son. Have a great thank day, you. Toby. All right. And thank, thank you, you very much, man. Chris, have a great day, man. Thank you so much. 
All right. Thank you, Toby. Um, so right. Thanks to Toby for the conversation. Again, um, you, you know, hey, share some your friends. Um, give us a like, subscribe. Uh, for Toby, this is Chris. Thanks for checking us out. Have a great day, everybody.